Hey guys, it's Marta. It's the end of June and this is the time that roses start blooming in Poland. Today I wanted to talk to you about the best practice that I do to have the most beautiful blooms and healthy roses. Let's go! gardening several years ago I was so afraid of growing roses whenever I read about them all I heard was they will get sick they will die on you but then I tried with uh, one rose uh, called Bonica and I had a lot of success with that then Chopin came and also grew very well and then I had this idea of creating a rose garden and trying them all. And then I went all the way and I think I've planted around, maybe not 100, maybe a lot of them, a lot of them in the garden one year. And I've been having so many beautiful blooms. And today let's talk what you can do to have a lot of success with them. There are thousands of roses and sometimes you want to try all of them. Uh, I tried reading a lot about roses and trying to choose the ones that would grow best for me. But my huge dream was to have a lot of David Austin roses. They are beautiful, they have incredible scent, they are English roses. And one of the most popular roses, one of the first ones of David Austin was Constance Spry. This is a climbing rose that blooms only once and I've planted two of them here. They look incredible, the smell is beautiful, but the only this advantage of this rose is that it blooms only once. But I've interplanted it with clematis and in the other part of the year the clematis flowers uh, are here so it also looks beautiful. When I started planting all of those roses in my garden I knew that not only the plant is important but also what you give it to the, to the hole when you're digging your uh, ground. So I've added a lot of compost, a lot of cow manure, I've added some bone meal and I knew that when they get a good start, they will be very, very happy. Most of my roses are uh, five, six years old, uh, so this is a very good moment for them. I think when you plant a rose, it doesn't always look that good in the first or second year, but the, when the third year comes, they will show you what they are, uh, what they are about. They will be looking more and more beautiful. They will be more stiff. Young plants uh, have very weak stems. Sometimes, not all of them, but a lot of them will be flopping, and you're like, "Wow, that was supposed to be a stiff rose," and it's not like that. But when they are, when they are young, it happens. But then, as they get older and you get the pruning routine right, they will be m more stiff and they will hold the flowers better. Here is a rose I absolutely love and I think I have six of them in the garden. It's called Bosco Bell. It is just starting to bloom but it has a beautiful scent. It's a scent that is uh, a rose scent mixed with citrus scent and I really really like it. Then you have this, oh I have a ladybug here. <laughs> Then uh, the color is also incredible. It is pink, but it has some peachy tint to it. So it's also very interesting. The leaves are not looking like much, but it's because of our hard water. It has a lot of white staining, but that's because uh, we didn't have a rain for two weeks and we had a lot of uh, sprinkler water coming on them. But love them. They are very stiff, hold their flowers very good. The scent is beautiful and they get a bit of black spot uh, during the season but not as much that I have to do any kind of treatment on them. There you can see a rose that is called Angela and that was a rose I bought. I don't know why but I bought it. I've seen this, some pictures I think and I forgot about it and one year I was like, what is this rose? What did I plant here? Because it has so many, it, it grows in clusters. So you have a lot of small open flowers that pollinators love. And it's uh, the amount of flowers, the color is beautiful. It starts very dark 
pink and then when they open it it has like a white inside so it looks beautiful and i've had it uh, paired with uh, salvia that is caradonna which has a very deep purple color so they complement each other very very well i can't talk about all of the roses some of them are not blooming yet i think this one is uh, william shakespeare but we'll wait for the blooms to come and then i will talk about it let's go to other roses that look better one of my favorite uh, David Austin roses is Queen of Sweden. I've got a few flowers today for a bouquet that I was uh, making for my Polish channel. You can uh, see that, uh, I will give you a link. It looked so beautiful, but this rose uh, has a beautiful scent. I love the flowers because they are not too full, which is good because when you have a lot of rain and you have all of those really, really thick flowers, they have a tendency to mummify and it doesn't look good. But this type of rose is fine with the rain. Also, I love its uh, stiff uh, growing habit. Uh, it does not flop. Well, maybe, maybe this one is flopping a bit, but uh, from all of the roses, I think this one is the most stiff. Love the scent. Uh, I don't really like the color of the leaves. All of the roses have different color of leaves and this rose has a matte type of leaf and also the, the hard water is on it. What I love about this particular rose bush is the amount of flowers it has at, at once. Uh, there are so many. I have beautiful roses that have perfect flowers, beautiful scent, but don't get that many flowers. So you will have, uh, at one time you will have four or five flowers. And this one is, you can see, one plant here. I, um, I've i put another uh, Queen of Sweden there, so I have two of them. They are looking perfect. Okay, let's see what is blooming there uh, and, and it's at their best. Uh, this rose is called Sharifa Asma, has incredible scent. Uh, I really love it, but it doesn't uh, react well to the rain. If a rain uh, falls on its petals, they will start, uh, they will become brown and start rotting. So that is a disadvantage of this rose. But if you need incredible scent, this is the rose to go. The rose that you see here with more intense color, the lavender one, is called Lavender Flower Circus. This is a cordless rose, very gentle or subtle scent. Uh, but it is very healthy, it has a lot of flowers at once uh, and I really like it here. It is something different. I, sometimes when you have a lot of roses that they are very gentle pink, I like to give it a pop of color. So you're a bit surprised and this one, this rose does that. Like, what is this scent? Oh, no, it's the iris. <laughs> In my garden, there are so many mixed scents and I'm sometimes, what is this? What, what is this? And this is iris. When the weather, uh, when the, the air is full of moisture, then the roses scent is more, uh, more. You, you can smell it more. Sometimes uh, I say to someone, oh, this rose has such incredible scent. And they come to my garden and they say, no, no scent. I don't, I don't smell anything. And there are days like that, that you cannot smell anything. And then another day is a bit different and all of the scents are like, they are entering your brain. I always try to remember all of the rose names, but there are so many that sometimes I forget. But here on this uh, wall, you can see Rose de Tolbiac. This is a beautiful rose. Uh, there are so many petals inside. Uh, then we have Brother Catfile, then we have Eglantin, First Lady, Maria Teresa and uh, Natasha Richardson, I believe. And some of them are shorter, some of them are the taller varieties, uh, and, but they are all pink roses, but a bit different shades and shapes. So that's always nice. When you have a lot of roses, you'll have a lot of deadheading. Uh, when you deadhead your roses, you are urging your plant to bloom even more. So I try to stay on top of my game, which I do not succeed too, too often. But when I see that a flower is spent, I just come and snap it with my fingers. Sometimes I just throw it on the ground. Sometimes I just compost it, depending on how much time, time I have but that's very good to do. Uh, sometimes when I don't have time, I will come after a week and I will that had like a whole stem. If it's finished blooming, I will cut it lower so it reblooms if this rose reblooms. Most of my roses bloom uh, th through entire uh, season or sometimes they bloom twice depending on the rose. 
but uh, pruning them after they, uh, they stopped blooming is very beneficial. Now fertilizing. I fertilize my roses in spring. In March they get the first dose of fertilizer and I use a fertilizer that is uh, made for roses. And then after their first flush of blooms, which is always the biggest, you'll get most of the flowers. After the flowers are spent, and it really depends on the rose when that happens, I will start uh, again with second dose of fertilizer. That is usually in the beginning of uh, July and I do it again and then they will get enough energy for their second blooming period. Sometimes I also do the pruning. If I want the rose to be more compact I will prune more. If, it's, if I'm fine with that I will just cut off the stalks with the flowers. But mostly I'm trying to enjoy them, to come every day and to try to smell them and to remember the scent that they have. And this is like incredible experience that you cannot just show someone through a video. Here I have a lot of roses in this border. Uh, now you can see, I think it's Princess Anne and Jeff Hamilton. These roses are really, really beautiful, uh, totally different colors, totally different shapes of the flowers, but I really love how they look together. And also you can see the alliums. These are the ambassador alliums that, that are the alliums that bloom the latest. And I think they go very, very well with this dark pink flowers of the rose. So what about the pests? Uh, do the pests like the roses? Well, yes, they do. Uh, the main problem we get, uh, especially now, we get the problem with white fly, the green fly and black fly. You will find all of them on the roses, on the new buds and they will be there. So sometimes I use sprays with polymers, sometimes I make my own sprays with uh, insectical soap and vinegar. And that works well too but with all of the organic sprays you have to be very consistent so you come every few days and you spray after the sun is down uh, and after all of the insects are gone because of course not the white fly green fly and black fly but after the uh, pollinators are gone because you don't want to spray on them it doesn't harm them when they fly after the spray is done but when they are flying and you will spray on them that will not do them any good so that's what i try to do if i have time if i don't some Sometimes I leave those uh, white flies, green flies and black flies on the plants and they can harm some of the petals, but they don't do too much harm to the plant. Of all of the roses that I have, I think the German ones are the healthiest. Uh, I think the Cordes ones, they seem the healthiest, but I'm not the biggest fan of the scent of those roses. The English roses, the David Austin ones have definitely better scent but the German ones are the healthiest. So I have both of them. And sometimes I enjoy the healthy look of the German ones, not really being the fan of the scent. Some of them are really nice, but the English roses from David Austin, the scent is just mind blowing. I'm really waiting for this show to begin. This is one rose, Bobby James, which I love beautiful open flowers, clusters of them, hundreds of them, even maybe maybe more than a thousand flowers. And it will just have incredible scent. It will look mind blowing. I'll show you in the next video, but I wanted to stop here. This is a very interesting rose and our relationship is, it's complicated. <laughs> I love the flowers, I love the scent, but I absolutely hate the stems. The stems are incredibly prickly and uh, I don't like the growing habit of this rose. It is very, very strange, but I really love the color. And when I looked at this rose online before buying it, I didn't like it. But then we went to England and we went to Chelsea Flower Show. And I remember that this rose, when I looked at it uh, at the David Austin stand, it really blew my mind and I bought it. But then, as I've been growing it for a few years now, I really don't like the stems, but still I'm growing it because I love the flowers. So I'm waiting for other roses to start blooming because the bloom period of roses in my garden is really varied. Some of them start earlier, some will start later. Sometimes it's because of the type of the rose and sometimes it's because of the lightning conditions. I've pushed some of them into the uh, less sun and they will bloom later but still I have a few of them that are thriving in semi-shade and they have a lot of flowers but they will just bloom later. This rose that you can see here it's called heavenly pink also grows in clusters doesn't have any scent but looks beautiful with those hundreds of tiny pink flowers.
If you have any questions about roses, please uh, write them in the comments. Uh, I am always surprised by the questions about roses. Everyone has different ones uh, and I've had so many different experiences with them. But overall, uh, do I ever regret having that many roses in my garden? No, I love them. But you must know that when you have almost 200 like I do, you have a lot of work with them, especially with that heading. Because in spring you will have a lot of pruning, you will have a lot of cuts. As you can see, my hands are always like, I've ha like I have a tiny kitten and that is my roses. But then again, the rewards are incredible. You can smell them. You can even use them in desserts. Uh, I sometimes uh, put a bit of egg white on the petals and the best tasting petals of roses are of those that have the best scent and the dark ones are the best. So when you put a bit of uh, egg white and then you sprinkle some caster sugar on it and then you dry them and then you have beautiful uh, edible petals of roses. You can try that on like a panna cotta. It is a very fancy way of using your roses. Okay guys, it's getting dark. So if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing and we'll see you in the next one. And hopefully Bobby James will be like in her prime. See you. Bye. Mm -hmm.